Before you start your project, you need to decide on how many things your final product will be moving. Does the hair move? Does the eye move? Does the mouth move? Does it have different uh, expressions and emotions? Because these things would drastically affect your work time and the limitations on your source materials and also uh, the glitchiness and smoothness of it. All right. So how, how far are you going to challenge? Obviously, hard work can compensate all the challenges, but you know, you're a first beginner, so you don't want to be too crazy about the first project. So when you choose materials, you think about what's going to move. And here are five different levels of complexity that you want to decide where you where your product sits in, right? So the first level is basic. For basic, we can have just the hair movement, right? Maybe a hair swings a little bit, the ponytail movement, and we can have um, particles, shadows. If you're good at shadow painting or cell shading, you can uh, have shadow as a different layer uh, that moves around, which would look it more 3D animated, all right? And you can also add in the breathing. You see the shoulder and the chest uh, moves a little bit, and all these things adding up could actually make your product very lively and very completed at already. For example, let's take a look at the Live 2D official website. Here's a sample right here. You look at this, you just feel like, wow, this is a very professional work. If you look closer, how complex is this? And how much workload is behind this? And how much workload it avoided? This raises a lot of questions. If you look at her, you see her eye blinks, right? Yeah. Do you see her mouth move? No. Do you see her having a sad face? No, you don't. Is her head moving a lot? Well, she moves from, there's a little angle rotation, which in live 2D angle rotation is really small amount of work. However, does, she, does her face turn from looking the left side to the right side? If it doesn't do that, it saves tons of workload. And then, is the eyeball tracking and emotions? Or is it even moving at all? I don't think I see the eyeball moves. Not even when it's closing. When it's closing, the eyeballs do not change at all. So the, these factors far, farly reduces the work time. More work is focused on this feather and the cloth and this cup right here because there's a little particle effect dropping off this liquid and maybe the arms right there and making sure the highlights, the spotlights, the shadows don't uh, bleed away to the wrong places. And these might be most of the workload, but it did save a lot because of what it avoided animating. So for you as well, you decide how many things are going to move because that would change your game a lot, all right? And let's look at one more example quickly. For this one down here, the deer blinks. So you're basically looking at two characters. Deer blinks, the ears uh, shakes, and for this girl, her eyes look slightly to left and right but it's so minimal that um, it's probably not fully animated. And then the mouth here, she has a smile mouth and a sad mouth, and those are two emotions. And you also see this leaf and petal uh, flying down uh, effect, right? And the rest are just a cloth. Now this is also not fully uh, animated as seen in other live 2D samples, and definitely not as seen in my samples, right? Because mine is, completely following a live 2D demo, which you do turn a head from left to right, up and down in eight different directions. The eye blinks, it follows, it talks and all that, and those would affect your um, workload a lot. And for for my experimental project, I find out that, I found out that um, even with just uh, capturing from animes, you will be fine. You can do all the animation without a problem. But of course, if you decide to not challenge that much with just the hair and a little bit of a overall body movement, you can actually complete your project with just one piece of pick like this one. 
this can do the whole thing already. However, if you want a fully animated uh, model for you to control or for you to put into phase rake to play with, then you need to do the whole package. And now for, for, for next four levels, right? The next level up is sort of like the entry level, which you have sight tracking, eye blinking, and the eyebrows. The eye part would add two to three hours extra to your workload. The normal level is when your head and face start to turn around and tracks the mouse. That would add one to two hours of workload. For advanced, the mouthpiece. The mouthpiece would make you um, feel the pain, right, of Life 2D. But that's the mouthpiece is the this is is the is the difficult challenge. And finally, um, bonuses is the expression because for basics you have happy, sad, and normal face. These three are uh, the basics, and you can finish them in one hour. However, for extra one. Uh, you know, if you prefer to have more uh, emotions like angry or uh, disappointed or um, crying, embarrassed, these are for every one of them extra. You need more time, so that's the science. That's the math uh, in the work time in the workload, right? So once you know how much you're challenging, now you can think about. Now you're ready to look into the anime episode and pick out the moments that you need for your project. For my case, I picked this one, and this one is because once I have this moment screen, screen capped, the following next two moments gave me these two images. The movement is only the mouth. The head didn't move, nothing else moved except for the mouth, which means I can have this one as my base image, and these are the support ones. And then I can just take this piece, throw it in, and become this mouth, and this piece also. Now I also need a sad mouth, because I want e emotions, right? I took this one, this one, and this one. These three went into this project, or this uh, base. What about the eyes? I want an uh, eye blinking. And then I found this one, this one, this one, and here. All right. And let's look at other things. Can I pick these? These are these are a lot of expressions right here. The mouth move a lot, the eyes move a lot individually, and they're all centered, sort of centered, right? So are they okay? Well, no, because vertically they are very upwards. If I have cut this part and throw it in, highly likely that it would feel incompatible, or in other words, your face would look messed up, all right? And so I. You, you want to avoid um, things that are vertically uh, tilted. If it's horizontally tilted, it really depends. Because you are going, well, I am going to do the left face and the right face also. So maybe horizontally, I will need some references anyways. I can, I could have took, I could have taken this one and become my left and right face open mouth, uh, but I didn't. But you know, it's, it's always gonna be an option. Um, and then this one right here, it's, uh, this, actually these two are very compatible, even though they are left and right, but you can always just take this things, flip it over and just slap it here. It would be fine. All right. So these are compatible because you look at angle, look at the structure of it. It's this one and this one, right? And this one is basically this right here. This is what I drew as a sample of, um, the structure in this one. So it's slightly downwards and a slightly left side, right? And it's the open mouth would look like this. Maybe I will see the teeth on the lower jaw. All right, and that is correct. However, if I take in the wrong one, I took one that is upwards and left, I would take a mouth that show teeth on the upper jaw and that would completely mess up your face. So. Do not, that's why vertical uh, angles are more problematic than horizontal ones, all right? But for ideal usage, always pick the same angle in both vertical and horizontal, and hopefully distance too. And there are two other factors. One factor is the lighting. The other factor is the color tone or whatever effects that is thrown into that scene. 
Example, let's have a closer look. Example, um, right here, oops, the one that I took actually has a very mild lighting effect from the top. It's white and blue. And there's also a little bit of bloom effect of pinkish uh, shining, uh, reflecting off the face. Maybe you can see here, but knowing Kyoani, they do that a lot. All right, so there's a little blue. There's a little bit of a uh, white mist eating up the uh, blue vibrance at the back. Like you can see, this blue is very a little bit faded, right? But this blue is very sharp, even though it's not the same, you know, tone. Uh, but you, you can see what I mean when it's slightly faded, right? So also right here, you can see the hair lower part of it. There's a shadow eating up. There's a blue um, fog eating up the colors. So these are things you need to be aware of because in different scenes, they may use different filters. This one is a yellow brown filters because it's sunset. And this one also, it's sort of a sunset, but the light source, because I've watched, if you watch anime, right? The light source in this scene is actually from some candles or some fire. And it's very, um, like the, the light from fire, it's the color effects. It's different from sunset uh, sunlight. So this one and this one are vastly different. Whereas this one and this one, this is outdoors, indoors, sometimes different. Usually outdoors are more blue tone, indoors are more yellow tone. In this specific case, uh, differences are so small. So I took this part and threw it in, it wasn't a problem at all. But if you were to face problems with the color tone, which in my case, I took this mouth and throw it in, and the mouth is actually in the in different color tones. What I did was, I actually did a retouch on the color tone before throwing it in. So that's what I tried to do in order to in increase this uh, sort of um, consistency, right? However, what I didn't do is that I didn't care about the distance problem because distance in anime affects the details. Usually, anime today, the further the character from away from the from the ca camera, and uh, the less details you'll see. And that's why in this specific case, you can see in this mouth it has three tones of pink inside the mouth. However, in this one, there's only one. So if you look at my example in the last episode, you will feel that whenever she looks to turn into this mouth, it will look kind of off, it will look kind of icky and deserve you a little bit. Maybe it's because you realize that um, the color tone has, diff has a different um, details, quality, all right? So those are things you have to look out to. First thing is angle, and then you want to look out for the lighting, the color tone, see if you can do something about it, and finally the texture details, all right? And hopefully you'll pick an anime that uses uses uh, cell shading if, uh, uh, coloring, because if it uses traditional painting, uh, or realistic painting, or if you screen cap from a 3D game, and take that JPEG and one turn into a live 2D, uh, 3D, uh, live 2D model, you will have trouble, or you would require a lot of work, hard work, in order to make it uh, completed. All right, so have fun, take your time, pick the right uh, materials, and if you're not sure, you feel free to ask me questions, send me images, and I will decide. I will let you know, uh, you know, the probability or the viability of. Uh, making that work all right so i'll see you guys in the next episode i will talk about how to slice things up cut them into layer and complete your source material and i'll see you guys next time